Ethereum has had a huge year in 2021. We've seen insane network adoption, flourishing use cases like DeFi, you know, NFTs, gaming. EIP 1559 went live and now we're burning ETH. And we've seen lots of different layer two scaling solutions roll out that are starting to get adoption. So in this video, I want to talk about one of the next hotly anticipated events on Ethereum's roadmap, the arrival of Ethereum 2.0, particularly the merge event where Ethereum turns on proof of stake, becomes a staking asset, and ETH becomes deflationary. And how I believe that's going to happen in 2022 and what you need to understand. I'm going to talk about this as a blockchain developer works this technology on a daily basis, particularly with Ethereum. And I'm going to answer some of those frequently asked questions I get about this. Like when exactly is this going to happen? Is it going to fix the gas fees on Ethereum? Am I going to get free coins when the network forks? Like what happens to my coins now? And so if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's talk about Ethereum 2.0. So what is it if you're not even familiar with it? Okay, so maybe you just need some clarification. So right now, if you're using Ethereum today, you have a MetaMask wallet, maybe you're buying NFTs, you're trading on a DEX you're using Ethereum 1.0, okay? So we are in a multi-phase rollout to Ethereum 2.0, which is the long-term vision for Ethereum. It always has been from day one, okay? Right, the whole idea with Ethereum was to get it out there, get it working, get users, and then change it to become Ethereum 2.0 to realize its grand vision. Now, this has taken years to achieve. We're about to cross a major milestone on this, in my opinion, okay? This is happening in multiple phases. We've had phase zero, which essentially is creating uh, the ETH 2.0 beacon chain. So Ethereum 2.0 kind of exists right now. It's in this thing called a beacon chain, which is a separate blockchain that's operating to the side of ETH 1.0 that you're using today. And that's where proof of stake exists. So you can actually go stake ETH right now. You just have to move it over to this beacon chain and you can't get it back until the merge happens. But that's the next big item on the roadmap that's going to move us into phase one of the ETH 2.0 migration, where we take this separate blockchain over here and we merge it back into Ethereum 1.0 and then everybody who's using Ethereum is now using a proof of stake blockchain where you can stake ETH natively on the network. And that ETH of the asset itself is going to be deflationary by nature. So when exactly do I expect this to happen? So I expect it to happen in 2022, but like, you know, what date? So it's hard to know exactly what date this, you know, is going to take place, but I've got a, sort of a time frame in mind, which I'll explain how I arrive at the answer in a second. So let's first of all understand how Ethereum 2.0 is developed. Well, it's, it, it's super important because like Ethereum 2.0 is a decentralized effort. There's not just like a company sitting there building Ethereum, right? And then they just ship it out in this centralized way like other software you might use. It's, it's an open source community that actually coordinates together to create this. And then whenever the blockchain's upgraded, basically they publish this open source software. And the only way the upgrade's actually accept, accepted is if people who run the blockchain, the miners or validators who run the clients, right, they download it and then make that transition uh, to this new upgraded software. And there's actually consensus on this, which is in the incentives of people who run the network, not just the incentives of the people who create it. That's why Ethereum is so amazing in the first place, or at least one reason. So I say all that because it's important to understand why Ethereum has taken so long to get to this point is there is a cost to decentralization, which sometimes is speed. A centralized company could potentially ship this out a lot faster to create a centralized blockchain, but the whole point is we want to keep ETH decentralized. And so we have some clues about when the community that creates ETH 2.0 expects this to happen. So very broadly speaking, it'd be in the first half of 2022. So why do I think that? Well, we actually just saw um, an article, well, we, not just an article, but actually an event happened where the Aero Glacier uh, hard fork for Ethereum, the network upgrade, uh, going live on December 9th. Okay, so basically what this does is pushes back the difficulty bomb uh, to June 2022. So what is a difficulty bomb? Well, basically it makes mining ineffective on Ethereum. Okay, so basically when we move from uh, proof of work to proof of stake, proof of work uses miners, proof of stake uses validators and staking. It basically puts hard-coded pressure in the network to migrate to Ethereum 2.0. And that, you know, goes off in June, which unless we see this finish line move farther back, which I just don't think is going to happen, then we're going to see ETH 2.0 
merge happen in the first half of 2022. As if I had to add my additional prediction on this, I'd say maybe like the end of Q Q1 or the beginning of Q2. But we'll just have to wait and see. All right, so now let's talk about expectations for the Ethereum platform like once this happens. Okay, so what what, what are you going to experience whenever we move over to ETH 2.0? So the biggest benefits, in my opinion, are that staking is going to be live. So now you can stake ETH natively on Ethereum 2.0. And that, you know, that's going to be liquid. You can withdraw it at any time, whereas right now you can do it, but you can't get it back until this merge happens. And the other is that ETH is going to become a deflationary asset. Okay, so we implemented something called EIP-1559 in August of 2021. I believe it was August, where uh, basically ETH is getting burned whenever new transactions are created. So if I send ETH from my account to yours, that's a transaction. If I trade on a DEX, that's a transaction. And right now you pay a gas fee to do that. And part of that gas fee gets erased from the network completely. Okay. So now uh, that that just means that less ETH is being produced by the blockchain. It, uh, it offsets the issuance. But whenever you go to ETH 2.0, you can actually like simulate the merge here. You can see that assuming that the current network activity at least stays the same, that ETH will be net deflationary after the ETH 2.0 merge. So that's really huge for the price appreciation of ETH, assuming that demand for ETH continues, which I think that it will then that it just introduces a, a, a part of the economics that's going to make ETH just appreciate in price. So now I want to address a f common misconception and also a frequently asked question that I get whenever um, we talk about the ETH 2.0 merge. So ETH 2.0 in and of itself is not going to reduce ETH's gas fee problem. And I know that seems like kind of like a, a like a what? A lot of people, they don't, they don't realize that because maybe they assume that's the case. But that's really what layer two scaling solutions are for. So this is basically taking a second environment and offloading transactions into this environment and settling them back on the main Ethereum chain. This has been the long-term vision of Ethereum for quite some time now. You can read Vitalik's papers about it. It's a mastermind behind Ethereum. That the long-term vision is a roll-up centric future, whether it's optimistic roll-ups or zero knowledge roll-ups with Ethereum you know, underneath the hood, all right? And then eventually Ethereum 2.0. And we can get the benefits of cheaper transactions and more transactions per second with layer twos now. We don't have to wait for Ethereum 2.0 to roll out in order to get that benefit. Now we'll talk about a warning uh, to watch out for whenever the merge happens. So a lot of people think that this could be a huge sell pressure on ETH, the asset itself, whenever it happens. So number one is because it could be a buy the rumor, sell the news situation. They think that a lot of people might be investing in Ethereum or Ether, the asset itself, ahead of this ETH 2.0 merge, you know, trying to get in on this massive opportunity because there's a huge carrot dangled in front of everybody and then just dumping their ETH whenever the news actually, you know, happens, okay? And then you have this additional characteristic, or sorry, this additional factor, I should say, where all the ETH that was locked up in Ethereum 2.0 in this beacon chain now being liquid on the market, and now they can take that ETH out and they can dump it, they can sell it for whatever. And these two things combined could be huge sell pressure on ETH asset itself. So I'm not just saying this is going to happen. This is just something that people are watching out for and something to consider. So the common question is, what's going to happen to my coins on ETH 2.0? Am I going to get free coins when the network forks? Um, no, that's probably not going to happen. There are scenarios where that could happen, where you could have an old ETH 1.0 stay behind. I just don't think it's going to happen. Most likely, you're not going to get free coins. So what happens to your ETH if it is going to migrate over automatically? Yes, it's going to migrate over automatically. If you have smart contracts on the network, if you're a developer, are they going to migrate over automatically? Yes, they will. Let's talk about what's even beyond this, because like I was saying before, ETH 2.0 is a multi-phase rollout. And when I say ETH 2.0, I think it's going to arrive in 2022. We're really just talking about the next phase of phase one arrival, proof of stake getting turned on and, you know, having all these benefits, which I explained previously. OK, so what's beyond that? You know, the long term vision of Ethereum is a roll up centric future with ETH underneath the hood with the final ETH 2.0, you know, but we're not quite there yet. So the next phase after that is sharding. Sharding is breaking up the blockchain into multiple blockchains, like a blockchain of blockchains. So why would you do this in the first place? Well, there's a limitation to Ethereum's scalability right now, which is every single node on the blockchain has to keep a copy of all the transactions. So that's basically saying that everybody has to do everything. Where sharding lets that responsibility you know, get broken up and delegated into smaller groups. So it's a blockchain of blockchains and then that way, whenever a new transaction is the network, it doesn't have to make a round trip to the entire network. It can live in an individual shard. And then you can have this, you know, uh, you know, process that that coordinates all these shards 
says that they are within themselves in consensus to the state of the entire chain. Now, this is a way, way, way complicated thing to pull off and is going to be the next phase, phase two of Ethereum 2.0. And that's really Ethereum 2.0 in its final form with layer two scaling solutions on top of it. Now, when do I think that's going to happen? So I'll be realistic and say, I think we're still a few years away from that. But that's not really, that shouldn't concern you that much in the grand scheme of things. So why? So number one is we're, we have layer two scaling solutions now and they're getting rapid adoption. So we can fix the gas fee problem. We can fix the transactions per second problem or at least make them a lot better now. Okay. Um, now when, when sharding comes, we're going to get this additional uh, scalability benefit that's going to multiply the effects of layer twos. Okay. But we can still fix the problem and get it a lot better now. So that, that's the first th reason they shouldn't worry too much. And then the other reason is that if we can pull off the merge and actually make it happen in 2022, which I think we can, a pretty high degree of confidence on that, um, that's going to be successful. That's going to do a huge, uh, it's going to be a huge vote of confidence for how Ethereum works, that you can have all these people that are coordinated in a decentralized way globally to create open source software that's you know in line with the people who run the network the eth holders themselves not just created by some centralized company and shipped out but you can create this decentralized architecture that you know is totally in line with the web 3.0 ethos and that the community can actually pull this off and get all these benefits that i'm talking about which that confidence can take us to as the next step of actually successfully pulling off you know uh sharding whenever it decides to roll out and that we see that the end product is actually worth the wait. All right, so that's an overview of what you need to understand about Ethereum 2.0 rolling out in 2022. So I hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so that more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast and have the technology as I am, if you want to get your hands dirty, I can get started today. Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They like you to make courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step or hey, Maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely. I should become a blockchain master step-by-step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.